Hey, what's going on? Welcome back, guys. This is the 30th annual Tahoe Pro-Am presented by MVP Disc Sports here at Bijou Community Park in South Lake Tahoe. My name is Spanky Edwards, and I'm here with my good buddy, Wildcard Dan Turner. Hey, guys, what's up? Welcome back. Round two. I'm excited. We got the, we got the actual shooters now. This is the lead card. Started off, we got Tristan Cook playing out of Grass Valley, 983. Super good player, excited to watch him watch. Quinn Berkovitz bringing the Pit Vipers all the way from Reno, 995 rated. Will Collins, 964 rated. And I've played a fair bit of rounds with him back in my Amher days. Uh, I'm excited to watch him play. Andrew McGill, 979 out of Placerville. Evan Osgood, says it's for Florida, but I think he's been living in Tahoe longer than me. 946 <laughs> rated. Throws with both arms. Here's our leaderboard here going into uh, round two. Let's get to the action. Yeah, no more feature card. This is this is the step up and go time. The leaders of the pack. Here's Tristan reaching forehand. So we're in the A position again. So that same looks good. I wonder what that red disc is that he throws. It looking like Gator esque. Quinn, was that a Zephyr, I think, going up the middle? He does like throwing the Zephyr, huh? I know he's got a green one like that. It's our first look at Will's game. He's going Heiser stand up. I Look like he's down there for a putt. I do like that just, you know, putter mid right down the gut right at it andrew throwing this yellow and red nova he throws this thing all over every course pretty well looks like that thing got clean maybe even long ah, that's good ever since i can remember he's been popping his collar <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah i'm a big fan of evan it's like he missed good his line a little player. bit, but it stayed clean. Yeah, Evan's a good, good guy. Good buddy of mine, yeah. Good player, very methodic player. Uh, oh, sticks to his routine for sure. No, mm -hmm. oh, the Nova's right here. Okay, this is a good drive by Andrew. Yeah, it almost looked like it had gone way longer than that. So that's definitely a good result and great putt, good birdie. So this is the same day as round one of the Pro-Am, so it's the afternoon, and traditionally the wind picks up a little bit in the afternoon. You can see it here on the flag. Especially this time of year in, in summer in Tahoe, we're gonna, the, these warmer days, July, August days, the, that Southwest picks up every afternoon. It's very common. And definitely the front nine, a lot more exposed to the wind than that back, which is a little more heavily wooded. So yeah, we'll see what it looks like when these guys get over to like hole four and five, and you know. That wind's going to be definitely swirling, ripping around. Definitely. Get a little clean up par. We got four birdies there. Hole one. Here we go into hole two. 272. This is the long. I've been a bit advocate on this hole. Let me know what you think, Spanky. I. Uh, the basket's right near the road, so a lot of guys throw this right-hand forehand shot. That one looks to be pretty good, but uh, you can kind of ace run it and then go out of bounds, and you're 13 feet from the basket, so it's like a tap-in par. I think we should implement a, a drop zone, maybe. And, uh, you know, if you go out of bounds, maybe you're going to get a bogey unless you bring one up for 45. What do you think? So I definitely I definitely agree. I like, I like the idea a lot. I think the... Maybe the one reason we haven't had that implemented yet is there's a lot of like maybe smaller B tier, C tier, like such amateur tournaments. But if we're, you know, which maybe that we're not seeing that kind of professional level ace run going on. I, I disagree. Anybody who can throw 270 feet with a forehand is cranking one around the corner here and they're gonna get a one, a two, or a three. I guess I'm just thinking that maybe you're not thinking ace every time Whereas this, like you're saying, the smart, you know, the more advanced 
more uh yeah it looks like will went to the dog park here so this is his par look but I, but that being said i completely agree i do think that there the drop zone is a great idea mm -hmm. see like right here see he's 45 feet away and like it's if that yeah. was the drop zone that's an incredibly difficult drop zone so if you went out of it's bounds tough. you had to go there it just punishes the players who got out of bounds which you know is kind of how it should be our good buddy jack culpit every single time he came up to this hole would say one or three that was his yeah. comment every time because he was ace running it every time. For those so. you don't know our buddy Jack Colt, but he's a nasty left-hander who uh, <laughs> can spin the frisbee like nobody's business. He throws but it. Quinn, far. nice good putt there for birdie. Whoa. Andrew went OB in his approach, so this will be for a bogey. <laughs> the caution tape makes it look like he was putting from out of bounds. Yeah, that blew in from the curb. That <laughs> of was, the caution tape was was really the out of bounds line. That was just to keep cars from parking yeah. on the green. Um, it's a multi-use park if you haven't been here before. So there's a mountain bike park, a skate park. There's two different dog parks. There's volleyball. So uh, on a busy Saturday like this, they put the caution tape up so nobody uh, parks uh, on greens or, or fairways because they don't care about this call. <laughs> Looking at one birdie, three pars and a bogue. Is that correct? Yeah, Quinn got the only one. Hole number three, 288. It's still in the long position here. B, this looks like a pretty good move by Quinn. That's the shot. You want to be in that, that center gap, flirting with that cluster of trees on the right with a gentle flip up with something still going to finish. Tristan, this one gets a little bit high on him. The high shot is, tends to come up short and left. Yeah, I haven't played a ton with Tristan, but I've kind of seen him around. Super nice guy. Uh, I think he favors the forehand. But uh, his backhand's coming around, and uh, yeah, you've got to. He's have, all around. He's a player. Yeah, you've got, you've got to have them both to shoot twelve under, right? Right. This looks pretty good by Osgood. That's looking great. Yeah. The only concern is going long off of that back rock wall, right. but I don't even. I think, think with this right like to that. left wind, though, if you go long, then you're putting with like a left to right, which is like. You know, I like to putt with a left to right win. I sure. Mean, yeah. If, if I got right to left or left to right, I'll take the left to right. Absolutely. Here's Will. Good little bid. You can't get too aggressive, like Spanky said last round, because if you go over that that rock ledge, it's all of a sudden a tester for no reason. And you can be standing in that little pine cone bunker down there, and like. Just the footing, surprisingly, is not great, and the distance is not great. So Evan was shorter than we thought. Yeah, he was right there, though. I think normally he makes that putt. Good birdie here from Quinn. Hot start for uh, young Berkovats. Great putt from Tristan coming up. Like I said, it looked like he was almost, he may have even been in that weird little pine cone bunker down below the hill. Right. But it way uphill at it, so. Just annoying when you gotta be standing and your foot's rolling around in those pine cones. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can you can you can move them from under your lie, you know. So you oh. don't have to stand on the pine cones, Spanky. <laughs> I'm stubborn. Is this news to you? I'm or? stubborn. Yes. <laughs> Put my foot down and go. You're just a glutton for pine cones under your feet? That's right. Now oh, Quinn off to a really hot start. So now we got hole four. 432 so this one's this one's deep right that is off the mark by quinn by a good margin yeah they're going to be playing behind the, the railroad car right correct so this i think one looks was... like a little bit more to be but it, i mean the sign says 432 but i swear to god it's like 470 like it's so hard to to reach i i'm not saying i can throw 400 but i've never got anywhere near this one <laughs> yeah like, if you get past those last few trees, you're like, oh, I pumped it. Yeah, I was saying in the last round, um, we played in the A position, or they played in the A position last round, and it was, like, the easiest of the par threes because this one is just so far away with so many trees and obstructions in the way. This looks, like, pretty good from Miguel. Yeah. That looked know. like he got kind of all the way past those those little short trees on the right there. I don't ever really throw that hyzer line, but I think with the, if there's like a right to left win, if you put it out there, that might be the, the best way to get near the basket. That's how I like to play because I find that the approach is pretty good from that right side. Like you said, I'm never, I'm never getting 
close to this one. So uh, I just like to be on the right side and hopefully get myself a wide open gap. Wide open load. Yeah, here's Miguel. He's almost pin high. Can't quite convert the birdie though. Tristan was a decent look, but nothing. Yeah. Will for a par. Take a look at the stats here. Uh, round two, there were exactly zero birdies on hole four. Thank goodness. I'm not the only one that can't birdie it. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Like I said, it, the, sure, the distance is long, but it's. I think it's the gaps you have to hit on the way to it to hit it perfectly. You know, yeah. like that birdie's there, but you. it's not just one straight wide open look at it. It's late. When I say late gaps, I'm talking, you know, 350 feet down the fairway, then you got to hit a gap. So, yeah, definitely bringing in the difficulty there. The par frame there, moving into hole five, 369. Same location, straight, straight up spot. the middle. Quinn looks like a little bit short and left. Oh, he didn't like that tee pad. These tee pads are slick. A little bit. A little dust on them. You can, you can definitely see some slips, a little bit of water on them. Very slippery. I'm not saying that's the reason for a bad shot. I'm just saying it can get you. Evan, if that stays up and gets a skip. You know what they say about excuses, Spanky? Everybody has one. They're like bogeys. Everybody makes them and they all stink. I was going to say... <laughs> Paris, the bathroom humor, please. You're welcome. I feel like this is a standard look on this hole. Like if you even even good drives can get to there. And I've seen a guy park it before, but yeah, I feel you. Yeah, yeah well, you got a pretty solid <laughs> lefty forehand. What did you throw at this one, Carl? You are throwing Carl. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was Eagle or if it was Wraith or Destroyer. Nah. That was good. Ooh. Quinn? Oh, that was part five. Par's around for our lead card. Yeah. Just four and five out here. They're just not, they're not gimmies. Especially four when it goes to where it is now. I would bet there's you know. maybe more than a handful around two. Let's take a look. Over here on five? Almost a handful, only four birdies. Four birdies. Like I said, it's there. We all know we can get it there. It's just not a gimme. Coming into six, though, I think, I think, oh, is this playing in the A position? Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. six, 284, whole six, 284. We are it's kind of wanting right this one every yeah, time. Yeah, everybody's licking their chops. It's kind of known for a headwind, but it's only 280. And a little left to right, so that forehand can really get taken right if you mm -hmm. if you expose the bottom of the disc. You really got to push the hyzer forehand yeah. out wide left. Yeah. This mid range play straight at it. I like um, righty forehand, or there's a gap on the right side is what I play. Yeah, with a uh, little flex. Oh uh, no, sorry, you're going sorry, pure you're... hyzer lefty forehand or righty backhand, call sorry, it what yeah. you will. I've seen, I've definitely seen the uh, the righty forehand on the right side of that tree with the flex. Miguel Firebird, ooh, you almost look like you almost aced it. And then, yeah, right here where Evan's at, another common, you know, collection zone where, with, like I said, that, that left to right wing that's really common, it's like heady left to right, it pulls him over there. At 284, it feels like it's just right there, but if there is a little bit of wind, it makes it a lot more difficult to precisely hit that line right Tristan's right here vocalize and the rest of the card is pretty disappointed if they're not birdie on this one nice smooth putt and Will is just parked oh here's Andrew cleaning up his par yeah, what a shot from Will 
I do love that that backhand mid just kind of drift in slowly over to it, slides right up. Yeah, for sure. He takes that the wind factor out, I think. It just kind of lets it slowly move instead of that forehand that just gets ripped over. Will coming off the birdie is feeling friendly and grabs uh, Osgood's <laughs> disc. I like it. I know the feeling. Uh, hole seven is this the two thirteen? So is this the shorty or is this the long one? Well, they're both short. Sorry. This is the shorter location, I believe. No, it's the long still. Oh, B, pin, B pin. I think the A pin's like one seventy four. Yeah. Okay. Interesting to see so far, looking at now three forehands along that left side. Right. Um, That's just the shot I think that they're more comfortable with. Definitely. And I think they've all executed pretty well. That's good reaching lefty. I think very commonly we'll see a lot of the right hand backhand on the the right side with like an overstable mid or something, or the putter mm -hmm. up the gut. Yeah, that's interesting. Nobody, but to not see like, anybody take throw that the hyzer, yeah. Andrew got the Nova to here, going up the middle. Good birdie. Oh, <laughs> he almost hated it. <laughs> I think he did hate it, but he got a birdie. Yeah, fair enough. I, maybe not an almost. Okay, that's well disappointing miss there for his bird. Sometimes this green get kind of weird because there's like a stoplight, there's people beeping, there's cars driving. It's like it's it's definitely like the busiest green on the course. I'll be honest, is so that's we no always excuse. talk about like you know the front nine like just a scorable nine holes. Let's get it and then. Every time I play, I'm just so excited to get to the back 18 where there's so, so much more quiet, there's no traffic. There's yeah, you're down the big meadow. All right, here's yeah. Quinn. 249, straight up the middle. These are good shots here. A lot of people play the hyzer. I feel like it's a uh, good line. Tristan's going to show us the forehand. The trouble with this forehand over here, and Tristan seems seemingly makes it look quite easy, is you can hit one of these trees and just eject out of bounds. And that's like, you know. The OB is so close to the trees that you have to get around. Yeah. That one looked like it went out of bounds. I'm not sure, but yeah, those trees, if you, if you touch them at all. Yeah, here's the most common line here by Osgood. This looks good. Park City. That is my preferred route. So maybe we missed a few. Yeah, we didn't see Will's Will's upshot, but he's gonna tab out for par here. If you remember, in uh, round one, there's always a little bit of technical issues on hole eight at Bijou. <laughs> but uh, we won't hold it against them. Good birdie there by Quinn. And we're on to the final hole of the front nine. 292, A pin. A lot of guys throwing mid range right up the middle like this and then letting it fade to the basket. Quinn with a little bit left to be desired, but I think he's putting. That is early. And yeah, that's this high. is the big mistake on this hole. Yeah, if you go up that left side, you're, it, it, it catches one of those trees. Not the happy place. Yeah, so we did see the OB graphic. Tristan throwing backhand. Catches that big main tree. You're saying Tristan is a, a forehand dominant player? Is that correct? That's my understanding, yeah, okay. just from being around him a little bit. I haven't ever played with him. But I would say he's over 90% forehand. Because he's thrown some good, but obviously, if you know, if you're dominant on one end, it's likely to see a miss here and there with that other hand. So seeing him with a little bit of an off throw, right. no big deal. That forehand's scary. 
you know, you have to throw it straight at the OB off the tee if you're going with the forehand. Miguel laying up here. He's going to get the bogey. Just outside the circle for Will. Can't, can't get the jumper to fall. That's a par. Tristan gets his par. Nice comeback or par. This is going to be for his bird, right? Yes. I do love hole nine. Such a yeah. fun shot up the gut. It is a cool hole. I seem to go out of bounds at the most inopportune times on this hole. I feel you. Like, I never go out of bounds except for when it counts. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. Sometimes I get a birdie here. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Checking out the front nine. Round two. Looking at our leaderboard. Quinn has the hot six down through the front on this card. Osgood McGill just one. Collins two. Tristan with a three down. All right, brother. See you guys Appreciate in the middle. You. We'll see you next time.